on the VMO. And now you're going to extend the knee and lock it up. To keep the heel on the ground. Initially. You should feel the VMO pop into your hand. Okay? Go a little higher. <laughs> Go a little medium. No, no, uh, anterior more. Anterior, uh, look too far. Right there. there you go. <laughs> so feel the contraction of VMO. Now make it a brain exercise. Okay, VMO, I'm going to try and pump this muscle up into my hand. You can even tap. Okay, this is one of the ways that you can try and see if someone can re recruit VMO. You could also do an assessment to see if when they do full extension, if they're getting the VMO. The exercise would be to contract it, hold 10 seconds, rest, repeat it 10 times. That's your local muscle exercise for your VMO. Okay? This is called a quad set, because you're setting the quad. You can put something underneath the knee. I can't long sit to do this, but if you can, that's fine. And when you, when you set the quad, you're feeling for the pumping up of the VMO, and you're pushing whatever it is underneath your knee down into the bed. The foot is not coming off the bed. Okay, I'm gonna say that again. The foot is not coming off the bed. This is a quad set. You're simply doing an isometric of the quad. You're not changing the range of motion. Okay? This is different than this is called a short arc quad. It is a short range. You're going through a short arc. That's why they call it that but it's still engaging the quad. The thought is that you're going from about 20 degrees of bend to full extension, so you're getting VMO. You should see the full screw home mechanism, the full extension, the full external rotation of the tibia, okay? But this one goes a bit beyond VMO, but it also is thought to be a pretty good VMO exercise. This is still different than long arc quads or full arc quads, same thing because you're going through the full arc of motion, okay? These are three different exercises. They have slightly different focus. Depending on how you dose it, you can almost use it in any category. However, the quad set is a local muscle exercise. It's a local muscle assessment, and then you can utilize it as a local muscle exercise, okay? Now, your, what's the role of your popliteus? Oh. So it's written as an unlocker, so it initiates the unlocking of the screw home mechanism. But its real role is eccentric control as the knee goes into full extension. In other words, controlling the locking mechanism, providing medial knee support. So bend your knees, foot on the ground. It's actually best if you have a sock. In Pilates, they have rotation discs. They're kind of like lazy Susans that you can stand on. They also have this thing called uh, functional footprints, as in the shape of a foot, and they pivot. So what you're going to do is you keep the knee bent, and you're going to twist the tibia into internal rotation, and then external rotation. Internal rotation, and then external rotation. Now, the nice thing about the sock is it slides on the floor. So what you actually want is you want the toes going one direction and the heel going the other direction. If you're on the heel, you're pivoting on the heel, that's not really the axis of motion of the tibia. If you look just in front of the malleoli, and imagine that that's the axis of motion, you're pivoting around that pole, that's your tibial internal rotation, external rotation. What you'll see in, the, in patients who have inhibited popliteal function, the popliteus is inhibited, they won't be able to internally rotate and hold it. So, you internally rotate, hold for 10 seconds, and then come back out. Internally rotate, hold for 10 seconds, come back out. That's it. So you would, so this is a, a deep muscle set, so you don't necessarily want them to fatigue. Um, if they are fatiguing, you want them doing this until they stop fatiguing, because you want to build up that kind of endurance. JOSPT, this was quite a while ago actually, they did a really cool exercise where they had a, a TheraBand in front and they twisted the tibia into internal rotation and brought the leg back. And they called this a popliteal strengthening exercise.
So it's a good exercise. It goes beyond popliteus because you're getting medial hamstring, but medial hamstring is important for knee control as well. So it's a great exercise. I just don't think it's only popliteus. This tibial rotation one, you can isolate popliteus. And Mark Comerford teaches it where you actually palpate the medial hamstring and, and don't let the medial hamstring go. Try and isolate it at the popliteus. Okay, but that's a nuanced version of it. Okay. Those are your deep muscle exercises of the knee. And your motor control breakout would be the full arc quad, because essentially you just want to see if their quads can fully contract into extension and get your external rotation of the tibia. Okay? So really no different than your manual muscle test, because you want them to be able to extend through full range for manual muscle test. But as I've made the case throughout the entire semester, I want you to pay attention to the initiation, the movement through range, and the inner range. So it's like a nuance to manual muscle test. You get more information out of it. So in this case, we're just saying this is your motor control assessment, your through range assessment. You can do prone knee extension. You can even do seated knee extension. The main thing you want here is to see the tibia internally rotating when the knee bends. Okay. If they have a delay firing of popliteus, or if they have poor habitual control of medial hamstring, they won't internally rotate. So essentially, you want them to bend their knee all the way, but you have to have internal rotation of the tibia. That's your movement control of the knee for flexion. Okay. So again, same as manual muscle test. That's not different, but we're emphasizing the need for the tibial rotation component. That uh, move on. So the rotation that I just showed you, that is essentially the, the knee rotation. Yeah, forget about these two. Forget about knee internal rotation, knee external rotation. Just stick to knee flexion, knee extension, and the deep muscle assessment, which is tibial rotation. Okay? This, this was for the intention of looking at like some of the other more advanced exercises, like the one I just showed you that JOSPT published. But don't worry about that for that. Some of the, the more advanced elements or applications of this will cycle back around in your advanced classes. Okay. So this is the dissociation. It's the same thing that we just went over. All right, it's just that you would focus on the knee. Now, if someone, if you're trying to do dissociation training, if someone is struggling with the foot activation, someone is struggling with the knee activation, you may need to regress the exercise to the point that you're doing deep muscle training. So you might have someone do VMO quad sets, you might have someone do popliteal training to prime up the inner core muscles, have them do through range just to make sure they, they use that muscle, and then get them to doing standing dissociation exercises. Oh, so I'm, yeah, for mine I feel like I need to be 